Walk up the reason for truth, where the truth comes first and the reasons come last, but where we're always and constantly learning. Because listen, when we stop learning, we stop teaching, we at least stop teaching well, always want to have a teachable spirit. My name is Stephen Garofalo, founder and president of Reason for Truth, host of the Reason for Truth YouTube channels and podcast. Welcome to today's episode of Reason for Truth. I'm here today with a very dear friend of mine, Mr. Steve Olin. 75-year-old Messianic Jewish Steve Olin. I want to hear about his testimony. You don't want to miss today. It's a treat. Steve's a dear friend of mine. He's a guy who really uh, lives all out for the Lord. You know, sometimes you have uh, full throttle. Sometimes you have medium throttle. Sometimes you have low throttle. I, I think Steve has one throttle. It's full throttle. And uh, he's full of love for the Lord and others. And, uh, and I, he's a man that I call friend, and I use that very, very sparingly. He's a man who I love, I call friend. But I want to hear his testimony. You're in for a treat today on his rise and fall and rise again through Christ in the business world and in life. And you could hear how Messianic Jew Steve Olin, do you hear his testimony of his rise and fall and rise again through Christ in the business world and in life? And to discuss how Steve rose to the very top of the business world, then he lost it all, money and family and everything. He was almost homeless, maybe two weeks away from being homeless. And then about 18 years ago, Steve gave his life to Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And Jesus, listen, restored him back up into the business world, restored his life, his family, his finances, really led him to becoming a worldwide evangelist. So, you know, Steve, please start from the beginning. I want to hand it over to Steve. He's in the room with me. Start from the beginning, if you would for our, our watchers and our listeners and in detail from your childhood in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. Uh, Steve's from Brooklyn. We understand each other, speak the same language in that way. I want to hear about that as well as your baseball career and how your baseball experience aided your business career rise. And if you would, Steve, uh, don't be shy. Don't be too humble. Give us a peek into the big business world by some of the companies you work for. I want to hear about that. Share that with us and uh, really uh, all about the, the company that you founded and the testimony, most importantly, of keeping world riches really in perspective, not letting them rule you, but God's grace and power and strength. You have truly ruled them. In other words, you use them for the good and uh, you don't let them rule your life. Now get ready to hear world evangelist and dear brother and friend in Christ, Steve Olin. Thanks, Steve. In order to cover my long 75-year life testimony, including my 52-year business career, I must tightly refer to my outline so it is not too long. I always start off my testimony by quoting John 8.32 that says, You shall always know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. First let me say, I am not special. I am a sinner like all of us in this fallen world, from the blood sin passed on to us from Adam and Eve. This is really God's testimony through me that he gives me the privilege to share through my life journey for only his praise and glory. I was born Steve Olshansky in 1945 in Brooklyn, New York to a poor conservative Jewish family and I was bar mitzvahed in Hebrew at age 13. In 1972, I sadly changed my name to Olin due to business prejudice against Jews even in a melting pot like New York City. At a very young age, God blessed me as a baseball pitcher to throw a baseball in the 90s, and my life dream was to play Major League Baseball. In 1963, at 17, the Yankees and Phillies wanted to sign me upon my high school graduation, but I was a minor and my father would not co-sign the contract. He said, be the first one in our family to go to college, and after you can play baseball. I was offered many Division I baseball scholarships all over the United States, but I preferred staying in New York City, and I chose St. John's University, a very good academic school with a great baseball team. God has a great sense of humor, <laughs> a Jewish boy at a Catholic university. I had a great college baseball career, but I blew out my arm as a junior in 1966 and could not go with my team to the College World Series. They had no Tommy John surgery to repair an arm till 1972, and my fastball was no longer major league speed. God has different paths for all of us. I wanted baseball, but God wanted me to be a businessman and an evangelist. 
I graduated college in 1967 with a BA in history and with a teaching degree, and for 18 months thereafter, through 1968, I was a New York City high school teacher. But I really wanted to ultimately go into business, so I went at night and in summer school for three years and got my MBA in business, graduating in 1970 from Adelphi University in Garden City, New York, majoring in marketing and economics. In 1969, I entered the consumer electronics and office equipment business in New York City, and God opened every business door for me. Long story short, nine years later, at 32, I was a millionaire. I started from the bottom, selling in New York City, and worked my way up to senior vice president of a well-known U.S. importer called Unitrex of America that sold calculators and digital watches to the mass retail market. It was a $200 million private company, and I traveled the U.S. overseeing a national sales force, and I also traveled to the Far East to source and purchase the company's products. And I also became a well-known industry spokesman. Eight years later, in 1976, baseball gave me the confidence and self-esteem to be fearless and not afraid to fail. And so I started my own marketing and sales businesses called International Marketing Concepts Limited that famously became known as IMC and Trevet Marketing Import Corporation, selling many different electronics products to mass market retailers such as Walmart, Kmart, and Target stores. By 1984, annual sales reached $300 million, and combined revenue over nine years reached $1 billion, and I became a multimillionaire. IMC and Trevette was the number one privately owned U.S. Consumer Electronics Marketing Corp. of its kind, and over that nine-year period, we won 22 national awards as the number one marketing and sales company in the U.S. And I also purchased my own office building, along with other real estate in New York City. I was written up in many business trades as the golden boy marketing sales guru genius of the consumer electronics and office equipment business in the USA. IMC and Trevette had 24 exclusive contracts to sell and distribute Atari and electronic arts video games and computers, and we private branded Samsung and Gold Star TVs, and also sold Toshiba and National Semiconductor Calculators, foam-made answering machines, Akai and Marantz audio equipment, Motorola and Mitsubishi car stereos, Sony and Maxell audio tape, Amdeck and Verbatim software, Allied Artists movies, Citizen watches and clocks, and Vidal Sassoon grooming products. Then in July of 1984, my number one line of Atari went house direct to eliminate the middleman, and I founded Vitek Incorporated. I invested a few million dollars of my own money, and from 1984 to 1988, I manufactured and imported my own cable boxes from Japan, and again, selling to U.S. market retailers. And in five years' profitability, built annual sales revenue to $200 million. But from 1984 to 1988, the U.S. dollar dramatically depreciated against the Japanese yen from 260 to 120, thereby eliminating me, the middleman, importer, and I sold my company to my Japanese manufacturing partner. In 1989, I was recruited as chairman and CEO to turn around a multi-billion dollar U.S. company called Olivetti North America, which was a subsidiary of the $20 billion public Fortune 500 Italian corporation called Olivetti Worldwide Office Equipment Industry. Olivetti North America consisted of three companies reporting to me, Olivetti USA, Triumph Adler Business Machines, and Royal Cash Registers and Calculators. We marketed office equipment to mass market retailers and also to business distributors. We sold word processes, copiers, fax machines, calculators, cash registers, and office supplies. 
After my success at Olivetti, I had accomplished every one of my business goals, both as an entrepreneur and as a Fortune 500 CEO. By 1992, at 47, I was burned out. I had done it all in business and reached the highest business peaks and had no more business goals to conquer. And in my personal life, I had been there and done that, living the American dream. I had more money than I could ever spend, so I thought. With penthouses in New York City and Miami, a 15-acre estate on the water in Connecticut, my own limousine, flying all over the world on the Concorde and on private jets and helicopters, vacationing in suites at the finest hotels and restaurants, and just living the good life. During all of 1992, I stopped working day to day and barely oversaw my many personal real estate and business investments. One year later, in 1993, out of nowhere, I started getting panic attacks and depression and could not sleep without knowing why. I went to a top New York psychiatrist and he had no answers for me. So he gave me Valium and sleeping pills to numb my pain, which only helped for a little while by just masking my pain and then not at all. I got into cocaine and weed and started to party often and started to run around with women, cheating on a great wife so as to drop out and run and hide from my psychological pain, which is no excuse for this behavior under any circumstances. I do not want to make this testimony too long, as many do not have the time to listen, and because there are already three previous videos on YouTube describing in more detail my 10-year downfall by just Googling Evangelist Steve Olin. The following is the part of my life testimony illustrating my rise and fall and rise again through Christ and how I was brought to Christ by only the grace of God so I can give him all the praise and glory that he so deserves. Ten years went by, from 1992 to 2002, and all my money and assets were gone, as was my great wife, who rightfully divorced me, along with the estrangement from my only child daughter. And I was just two days away from becoming homeless, because no company in my industry would hire me because I was now categorized as damaged goods and as a has-been, even though I was once described as the golden boy genius of my industry. Eight years prior, to the 10th year of my spiraling downfall, I sent out a national mass mailing seeking a job not in the same consumer electronics and office equipment industry as they did not know of my fall from grace. But I could not get hired due to no experience in their industry and being overqualified. It was a catch-22 situation. So at 857, 15 days before literally becoming homeless, I had an epiphany one night. I was crying out to God, Why have you forsaken me? Like Jesus said on the cross when he was a man on the earth. And then God spoke to me. Yes, God spoke to me. Not orally, but into my mind like a lightning bolt. And here is what God said to me. My son, I have lost too many of my children to Satan, and you were on the path to hell. But you did not need me and thought you can do everything on your own. So the only way I could try and save your soul was to break you, to bring you to your knees and humble you, so you would listen to me. But you were so stubborn, you made me take everything everything from you that I did not want to do to finally get your attention at this moment. And now you have a decision to make. Accept my son Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or forever wish you had on your way to hell. Wow. I always believed in God, 
But since my bar mitzvah at 13, I had no relationship with God. And as a Jew, I had heard of Jesus, but did not know much about him, nor had I ever read the Bible before. I said to myself, did God really just speak to me? But for the grace of God, a moment later, I just blurted out, Father God, from this day forward, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I give you total control over my life, and that I will follow every new road that you put me on for only your praise and glory, and that your will always be done and not mine. I told God that I do not have to be rich, famous, and powerful anymore, but that I just wanted no more than a roof over my head and some food on my table to just survive and not be homeless in 15 days when the rent was due that I did not have. But the most important thing of all, I ask God, please give me peace in my mind and my soul forever. The Bible says in Mark 8.36, For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Which describes my own life journey. Thirteen days later, before the landlord would come for the rent that I did not have, God miraculously interceded, and a businessman owner called me out of the blue after not seeing my resume that I had sent to him two years prior that had been sitting on his office credenza buried under many papers, and after interviewing me for four days, offered me a $500,000 starting salary and a multi-million dollar contract to turn his company around, which I subsequently did. I had asked him what made him call me two years after I had sent him my resume. He explained that the Sunday he called me, all day long his mind was telling him, go to his office and clean up all the many papers on his office credenza. And after sifting through all his papers, my resume was at the very bottom of the pile that his secretary had put on his credenza two years prior to have him read when he had a chance, which he never saw. Had he read it then, he never would have hired me as his company was doing well. But two years later, he was close to going out of business and other industry execs he hired had failed to turn his company around. And so he felt he had nothing to lose to hire me from another industry based upon my spectacular resume. God is in control over all our lives who honor him. And God also works in mysterious ways. As believe it or not, this man was an atheist. I extract from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9. My ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And in Proverbs 3, Verses 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and in all ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path straight. After that successful turnaround, I went back into my own business working for myself and God not only restored my wealth, he brought me a new wife. We are now happily married 17 years and God also brought back my daughter to me with grandkids with a great relationship. But even more important than all this, Jesus has given me joy and peace in my life and soul for my sincere repentance and my true relationship with him through the ongoing guidance of the Holy Spirit that now indwells in me. And I now look forward to being with Jesus for eternity when he calls me home. And now... The most important part of my testimony that I evangelize at every opportunity God presents to me. Jesus is a forgiving God of restoration through his grace, but only when we truly repent of our sins and accept his son Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I am still in business, and since 2013, my number one reason for living is being an evangelist for God and Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to try and help lead others to Christ to convict through the miracle testimony 
that God gave me the privilege of sharing for only His praise and glory and not mine. I now go on Christian TV and do prison ministry as an executive board member of Safer Communities Ministries and lead Bible study every month, sharing my testimony, God's testimony, in several jails in North Carolina and South Carolina and in Ethiopia, where I visited three times over the last two years, having preached in soccer stadiums and in megachurches in many cities to over 500,000 people, who most of which truly accepted Jesus for the first time, as well as rededicating their lives to Jesus as their Lord and Savior to convict. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, to whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. My number one ongoing daily prayer is for God to use me as he wishes by my asking him to please lead others across my path so I can share my testimony, his testimony, that he gave me for only his praise and glory to try and help lead others to him to convict. Evangelizing is now my greatest daily joy and privilege, being guided by the Holy Spirit I do not know why God chose this blessed journey for me before I was even in my mother's womb and why in the latter part of my life he made this poor Jewish boy from Brooklyn become a Messianic Jew evangelist with the blessed privilege to serve him through my evangelism. But I know I will find out one day when he takes me home. As I reflect, I now do know through the Holy Spirit that God had to first take me through my life journey of ups and downs and humble me in my pride and bring me to my knees to get my attention and then to teach me the wisdom to know what is most important here on earth in our preparation to make the right free will decision to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior so we can all dwell with Father God and His Son in eternity. There was only one road to heaven, and that is accepting God's Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. The Bible says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Romans 8, 31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 28 says, All things work together for good to those who love God. And Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I often remind myself of these scriptures, especially every time Satan attacks me, which is often now that I spread the gospel of Christ. But these scriptures from Christ are my successful protecting armor against Satan. I thank you, Steve Garofalo, for the privilege of this interview that you are putting on YouTube and your Reason for Truth ministry podcast. So my testimony, God's testimony through me, can give Father God and His Son Jesus all the praise and glory that they so deserve. God bless you, Steve, and all who serve Him. Amen, amen, amen.
Well, I hope you enjoy today's testimony with Steve Olin, uh, world evangelist and dear friend, brother in Christ, Steve Olin. To hear more from Steve Olin, simply do this. Go out to Google, right? Google has everything. Just go ahead and put into Google Evangelism Steve Olin or Evangelist Steve Olin. Listen, you're going to find three great, really powerful videos. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them below. Listen, I'll get back to you. You can leave them for Steve on his site. We'll both get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. Make sure to check out our blog uh, at rftblog.com as well. And make sure you like and share this with others, especially your Jewish friends. That's really what steers Steve's heart as he wants to reach to his old people there. And, uh, and those who are not Jewish as well, tell your friends as well to subscribe. Hit that little alert bell down there. You that little Sicilian left hook. Boom, knock that thing out. You won't miss any of these. God's blessings today. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed, been blessed by Steve's testimony. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, with dear friend Steve Olin, and this is your reason for truth for today. Mm-hmm.